In the USA, Harry Anslinger, head of the Narcotics Bureau, produced Reefer Madness. Marijuana was identified with the jazz culture and its corrupting influences. Taking these grotesque scenes at face value, Congress rushed marijuana onto the list of dangerous drugs. With added manpower and money, the Bureau was now able to protect America's youth. The next tragedy may be that of your daughter, or your son, or yours, or yours, or yours. Toker's Bowl? Toker's Bowl, thank you, BC. Be there. That's right, folks. You can be a lucky cannabis judge to be a guest at the first annual Toker's Bowl. Grab a copy of Cannabis Culture Now. Get your Cannabis Culture Magazine now. Two generations later, Valerie Corral runs the Women's Alliance for Medical Marijuana, or WAM to supply medicine to the sick. She wanted others to benefit as she had done. Do we have bigger weights now? Well, there's on, on Kathy and Suzanne. On the coast of California, she lives in Santa Cruz. Hillary Black, who runs the Compassionate Club in Vancouver, has come south to hear her story. As we were driving back after a long afternoon in the hot springs, a plane began to fly toward us. We thought we might need to make an emergency landing. We pulled off the side of the road, but he simply made a quick turn around the lake and came back following us. Almost like the plane was harassing you. Yeah, yes it was. And it turned out that he was. Um, he was being playful, is what he said. And so he, my girlfriend saw him in the rearview mirror, and even though it's a plane, you can't hear it until it's really overhead or beyond you and by the time I heard her scream or gasp and looked up the belly of the plane was here and our car lifted off the ground what? and it rolled what? 365 feet and we were both thrown from the car oh no yeah and it left me with a brain trauma and grand mal epilepsy sometimes as many as five seizures a day I went through a long regime of many different drugs and I was unable to find a medication that would control the seizures and I lived in this vacuum of a drug stupor and really felt like I lived underwater. What ensued was a, a deliberate effort to try to find an alternative. Mm -hmm. Of course we didn't know of any but I had still been receiving at that time medical journals and periodicals and Mike was reading through one and read that laboratory-induced seizures in rats had been controlled with marijuana. And we looked at each other and we thought, this, can this be? I mean, this is too, this would be too simple. When we were first arrested here, we were growing five plants. And truthfully, I was stunned. And I was the first person in the state of California to challenge the law on medical necessity. Knowing what I knew, I wasn't very well going to say I'm guilty of a crime. Shortly after our arrest, there, there was a signature gathering to put a medical marijuana initiative just to get the pulse of mm -hmm. Santa Cruz County, how people felt about it. Mm -hmm. And it won with 77.1%. Wow. So I thought that meant public national statement. Hooray, I'm the I'm first free. person in the, in the United States that can legally grow marijuana. Uh, a year and one month later, they, they showed up again. and they came again. And they took our plants and we were livid. And... Uh, we decided that at that time we would file a suit against them and go completely public and make the statement that we were going to start not only growing it again, but an organization to give it away to teach people who are seriously ill with glaucoma, with epilepsy, with multiple sclerosis for whom it works. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting together. We're going to get together and we're going to continue to use it. Oh, God. We're all sick of this weather. Yeah. Leslie is Nathan's mother. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. How are things going? One of the many people Valerie supplies. Still not finished. I mean, it's just so much. Nathan's 17 now. 
and he had a couple of seizures when he was young, about six years old, and went on medication for two years and didn't have any more seizures. And then on his 13th birthday, he had another seizure. And, um, and then the nightmare began, and the seizures uh, came more and more in frequency and uh, we would try one medication and it wouldn't have any it wouldn't have any effect on him and we'd try another medication and there was no stopping the seizures they were increasing and increasing when things would get really bad he would have a grand mal he'd be up for an hour and then he'd fall down again and have another grand mal he would maybe bite his lip maybe bite his tongue maybe smash his head on the way down and uh, maybe be eating and choke on his food because you couldn't swim before. We wound up going to UCSF Epilepsy Center when our local doctors or the neurologists in the area felt like there was nothing else that they could do for him. So they basically said the only thing we can think of doing to help him at this point is to actually separate the right-hand side of his brain from the rest from the left hand side which is a rather large surgery and uh, and we'll get back to you on that and they turned around to walk out of the room and I said no way you're not walking out of the room he can't have a life like this anymore he spoke about killing himself and to hear your child say that he doesn't want to live anymore I can't tell you what that feels like I used to visualize us all uh, getting into a car and just driving off a cliff together because I couldn't figure out any other way to make the whole nightmare stop just prior to that, I had heard about Val and uh, medical marijuana. So we had just started cooking up it in soy milk with it and giving Nathan a little bit. And what we were finding right away was that he was sleeping and uh, his appetite was starting to return because some of the side effects of the seizure medication are just outrageous. He wasn't eating, he wasn't sleeping, and um, if you don't sleep and you don't eat, you have more seizures. So it was like this vicious, vicious cycle that we couldn't get off of with him. So when they said increase the medication, I said thank you very much and hung up the phone and I increased the milk. They called back again in two weeks and said, how's he doing? I said, he's not having any seizures. They said, oh, good, that last increase in the medication must work. I said, I never did it. I never did the last medication increase. I increased his milk. So they giggled. They thought that was very interesting, and um, they wound up calling it mother's milk. We have kept him on this milk now. It's been almost two years that he has not had any seizures. We feel strong enough to try and start getting him off of some of the other medications, and that's what we're trying to do. The meeting of WAM members is an occasion to establish community. Yeah, well, I know it made you stay out there. Welcome aboard. Now, with Proposition 215, Valerie Correll has the support of the state of California. Super. Californians who needed marijuana for medical purposes had the right to use it and to obtain it and that if it was recommended by a physician and determined that someone's health required the use of marijuana for alleviation of pain and suffering that that was a legal and permitted use of marijuana. I was wondering how the muffins are doing. I was thinking about typing up a little, you know, survey, seeing how they're doing everything. I was wondering if you guys were all willing to fill that out for sure. me. Oh, yeah. So I can figure out what I'm doing. They're wonderful, Tony. And I, they're wonderful. Yeah, it's great on my stomach. Show that smile, Tony. Happy enough to smile. Yeah, for Yeah, we're going to yeah. But under federal law, the growing and distribution of marijuana still brings with it the risk of arrest and imprisonment. Local support is no guarantee. The city council in Santa Cruz did pass a resolution in support of the activities of WAM. And the reason we did so is because the people of our community support this. 